Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the Tom, the Tom Scarborough Finance Committee to order, February 26. Um, so it's called to order. And those present, we're all present this evening. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion, Maybe. conversation. Uh, yes, there's an amendment to uh, the minutes that I wanted to add uh, after the sentence about what uh, Councillor Cloutier was working on with Ms. Crockett, that um, Councillor Gleistein was working on a scoring system with Ms. Crockett. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to approve the amendment or the... So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Not to the approve the minutes as amended. All in favor? Um, Okay, thank you. Um, so the next order of business, Tom, I think you mm -hmm. have been working on the bonds that you would like to review and discuss with us. <coughs> yes, uh, I apologize in advance uh, for this discussion. You're seeing this for the first time. We had hoped to get this out with some time for review. Uh, Ruth and Gina undertake a, a very thorough process to understand what are the items to be bonded. That involves uh, coordination with our counterparts in the school and communication with all the senior staff. So kind of pulling all those pieces together. And what you'll see is uh, capital projects very often um, do not occur in the same year that they're budgeted. And so this exercise is often looking at past authorizations. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, it's all uh, uh, identifying uh, what funds are needed to fund projects that have actually been executed so what you're seeing here is a combination of both town and school um, capital items that have had prior approval either by way of council uh, or the voters as may be required. And it does span a number of past fiscal years. And I, I really can't, perhaps I can, but uh, I don't know the particulars of some of these older projects necessarily, but for the newer ones, for those of you that were involved in the budget approval last year, I, expect some of these will resonate with you. They're familiar territory. They were approved uh, very recently. So all told, we're looking at a total bond issue of $7.8 million. And we're here before you um, really, you know, to, to get your input. But this matter, we expect, will be on the March 4th agenda for council action. And that really is predicated on uh, the schedule, the normal schedule we have is to go out to the bond market in April. And our advisor has advised that that's the best time annually for us to hit the market. So um, starting this uh, next week at council will put us on pace to go through the process with the rating agency, so on and so forth, and be in a position to sell um, sometime mid-April. End of April, I should say. Has the crazy volatility of the market in the last three days Benefit us or hurt us? It sounds as though it's a benefit. Um, you know, so folks are running to the bond market out of the stocks and into bonds. And so uh, uh, it, it may be fortuitous uh, in that in that regard. And I think it presents some other challenges from the stock side of things. But uh, treasuries and, and the municipal bonds, I think, are the beneficiary of the current climate. It's forcing the rates up as, <coughs> as stocks come down. It's people are moving money into so we get a <clears throat> I think it's going to be favorable to us in terms of interest rate yeah. 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 You probably lose the bond premium so can you just walk me through a line I'm just trying to understand okay. it say like the first line mm -hmm. um, so the first line that was a, uh, a capital item in community services it was for a one ton dump truck uh, and the budget estimate was 56000 We've actually gone to bid, and it came in at 49420 Okay. So that's the actual cost to the town, and that's all we're looking to bond. Okay. So the difference is not something that you bonded in the past, and this no. is a, a balance. This is like you just got a better price, so Correct. we don't need to bond as much. Okay. And in some cases, you'll see it's the, it's the same number. It depends on the, on the nature of the item. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, certainly for durable items like... You know, for items that we've gone out to bid, we have an actual specific um, appropriation or, or expense, I should say, at this point. Have we already spent some of this money? We just fronted majority. it, and now we're looking to recover that, it? Most of it. The vast There's majority. some school projects that they've 
what we do is we ask the departments what they think they're going to spend between now and December. Yeah. And then so some of it is based on actual expenditures and some of it's based on what we think they're going to spend. Hmm. Uh, for example, with the Engine 2 replacement schedule, it was authorized for 652500 on that first page that went to voter referendum mm -hmm. and it passed this past November. They have a contract in place, but between now and December, they're only going to really spend about the 462000 So that's all we're going to bond. And That'll get us a whole truck? For the truck, and then next year we'll bond the remaining of whatever that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got to be careful. We, we're obligated to uh, to avoid the arbitrage requirements from IRS and S SEC. We can't borrow money bef too much before it's needed. Um, there are spending limits. We, we have six months to spend, like the capital equipment, mm -hmm. 12 months for something else, 18 months, and then like the project like the public safety, it's two years. Can you talk me through the fire truck one more time then? So yeah. we there went out with 650, I think, to the voters? Mm -hmm. was the, okay. And the voters approved. Yeah. That. So then they went out to bid and they went through their process and uh, the amount came in a little bit less than what this is showing and then they also received a discount if they paid a certain percentage up front. And uh, so that helped to save on the cost as well. But, but the transaction's all done. So we, we basically budgeted 652 but the total all-in cost is going to be 460 No, this is just what we're going to spend through December. So there's going to be a little bit more that they're going to finish up next year and we'll bond the remaining of that next year. These so are we, these are custom build. It takes them 12, 14 months to build them out. Uh, I got so you. these are like progress payments? Yeah, we know what we'll have to spend in progress payments. Uh, there's certain milestones where payment is uh, required. And, and so, we don't want to really bond 652000 if we're only going to right. need I understand it now. I just thought you could buy it off the shelf and you're yeah. good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they, not. That's why these are so expensive. They build them for the ground up. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That helps. Other ones are more, you know, much easier. A truck that is off the assembly line, we go through a public process, we know what that is. Once it's done, it's gone. Now, going off of a, a very poor memory, $7.8 million seems to be about the, the amount that we pay down in debt in principle each year. Is that accurate? Do you know what? It's been about $7 million. Yeah. Okay, so this will increase our total debt about 800000 or. Yeah, it will depend on how much comes off, how much goes on. I haven't finalized that piece of the budget for okay. next year yet, but uh, this this debt service will be considered in the debt service costs that we include in the FY21 budget. Right. So it won't go up in total. In total, for the whole budget, or for the whole all of the debt, it will be increased by seven million, less whatever gets paid down this year. But for next year's budget, it will only be a portion. Right. I, I was looking at the the total the number. Total, it, yeah. it, mm -hmm. Okay. On that point, though, Morris, I think in the past when we looked ahead at what's going to happen to the bond schedule, the debt, and the principal, where they're the debt outstanding, haven't we assumed in the past that we would be at on average about four to six million to the? And so this is just a little bit, a little bump higher, a little bit richer than. But that's in, in large part because if you look, for instance, in the um, in the years past, we've just got a lot of dollars that are being bonded this year that haven't been. So I'm looking especially at the 2017-2018 municipal. We're bonding 2.3 million yeah. that had been approved back in back. FY18. Yeah. So um, that's really where you're seeing that big bump come up. Okay. So it's something like the 2014-15, the, um, the technology, new tech equipment, that either went the referendum of our budget several years ago, and we're just now planning to bond it mm -hmm. because they're just now planning to spend it? Correct. We, we sit down with the school department and we ask them to give us what they think they're going to spend. And, uh, we have a new IT director, so I think some of these things got put on hold over the time frame because I think we've had a couple of them in between 14 and today. Uh, so Is there I any time frame when, we, when you, I mean, coming from the private world, capital can get lost if you don't? Don't, don't make yeah, a move. The, the authority um, doesn't lapse, but uh, we have been known to come to you with a list of things that projects that have languished and will not advance for one reason or another and have you kind of rescind. remove that, rescind that budget authority. But unless there's a subsequent action, the budget authority exists forever, theoretically. Okay. You'll see a lot of the lingering is on the school side, and I don't mean to implicate them, but it's a source of some 
frustration, I'll say, uh, for us and really for Ruth and Gina because they're the ones that have to track this stuff mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. And, and the one from 2009 and 10, the 184 homes were, was yeah, that's approved the, for one for 44, and now it's 132. Well, that's land bond money. So that was the last time um, voters approved land bond funds. Prior to this past year. Prior to this past November, and so these were two projects that were approved by council to use land bond monies. That's why they're showing such a, a, a an old date, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but they were approved in this past year. But they're going to be bonded under those land bond monies, mm -hmm. but we still need bond orders for them, so that's why they're listed here. Yeah, so that will leave about $1,400 left in this million. This was an original a mil, a million dollar land bond, and there's about 1400 bucks left. In okay. It. So why, why is the 184 homes right at 44 and we're going to bond 132? So what's the... We're, we're not. The, it's, I think there's just a little bit of a typo there, Councilor Glestein. The, it was approved for 44000 and if you look directly across, we're actually bonding 42100 and that, oh. that 4,200 plus the 90,000 above is what gives you the 132,820. Okay, gotcha. So, so Blue Point wasn't that. voter approved or authorized in the budget, it was authorized by action of, of the council. council. Okay. Right. The uh, approval okay. was for a blanket, I think it was a million dollar approval for uh, land bonds, and there are a number of qualified purposes, mm -hmm. these being two of them approved by council. And the way this land bond works, we don't bond money until we actually have a use for it. Um, case in point, we, you know, the voters just recharge that with another 2.5. We will not bond that until there's a viable use for the money. Yeah. And how, mu how much is left of that, a million? It's pretty much gone. $1,450. Okay. Okay, so. So we'll use that up whenever the next project is, and then we'll start in on the two million. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just looking at the official statement from last year, 2019, and it looks like we'll retire $7.63 million of principal. So it's basically a wash. Yeah. A little bit more debt. That's the good news is the bad news is we're not making any progress right, right, toward right. reducing the overall debt load. And, and all this stuff is already approved, so it's not like we have a lot of... Right, no, it's... You know, and in half, more than half is already in-house spent, and, right. spent yeah. and paid for. Yeah. So. so so at this point, Tom, you need a motion or a recommendation from the Finance Committee to bring it forth as a recommendation to the Town Council for the 4th. That would be very helpful. It will be. It is on the agenda for the 4th, and a recommendation from this committee would be very helpful. Any other questions? No, I, I mean, <clears throat> my only hesitation is I just got this minutes ago. So I haven't had a lot of time to think about it. I don't see anything that jumps out at me as being a concern, though. Um, yeah, it, it, if you don't feel comfortable taking action, that's fine as well. I think, Peter, you've really pushed this in the past to the extent that we can test these sorts of mm -hmm. things at committee level before it goes to council. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. So the recommendation is uh, icing on the cake, so to speak. Uh, but if you're not comfortable, we, we understand as well. Yeah, I mean, I think in the past, to, 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 to Tom's point, that I think that the finance, uh, not the finance, the, the town council said they want committees as much as possible to do sort of the betting and the work, because yeah. there's three out of the seven of us here. Mm -hmm. That way we can spend a little more time with it, and if we're comfortable, then that presumably increases the comfort level of the other councilors. But the other councilors, are seeing this too, or we'll see this. So, mm -hmm. I would, if if everybody's comfortable making a motion to make a recommendation to the fine, I, I don't know if, if both of you are comfortable, one of you are comfortable <laughs> doing that. What's the motion? Just that we would we would approve this bond listing as a recommendation to the town council for consideration at the March fourth. Consideration. Yeah, so moved. Consideration or a recommendation? Recommendation. Okay. I'll move that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, the only piece that <coughs> isn't listed here, and we'll work on this with our financial advisor, is how long we're going to bond each of these items. So, like, we're not going to bond a 22000 traffic monitoring for, you know, five years or 12 no. years even. We're going to bond it for some portion less. The public safety building, we probably go out longer. So it may look like it's a 20 year bond, but not every item in here will be 20 years. Right. It'll be different levels. Right. Right. And um, the other piece that I just wanted to bring out is that we're probably gonna try and consolidate some of these so that, for example, it will say public works vehicles instead of listing each one out. Mm -hmm. Our uh, uh, 
fund council has kind of recommended that we do that to to make things a little bit easier for us so when it goes to the council it might be a little bit shorter but the detail will be here all of these are on the capital improvement plan yes oh, well, except for the well, even the fire truck was right because it had to go to. It was. Yep. So the fire truck is. It should be. Yep. The only yep. one that probably wasn't was the Blue Point Church because there's no, no dollar amount in that first column, so that might have come after. Yeah, as I recall, the historical society came to you mid budget, yep. kind of out of cycle, and said, "We've got this restoration project. We can you help us out?" And the council, by action, authorized use of those funds out of cycle. That's right. Otherwise, it would have an amount there, and that would tell us it went through the budget process. I'm just thinking through our policy where we say that we're only going to bond things that are on the capital improvement plan. Uh, that one probably, I, I guess I can reconcile, but the others, I just, I, I, haven't, valid, I haven't looked into this really at all other than for a couple minutes. So yeah. I'd be okay with it being on the agenda for the council, but I don't think I'm ready to stamp it. Maybe we can say we had the discussion, and every sure. question that I had at this time was answered satisfactorily. So I'm comfortable with that. But uh, I guess I'm not comfortable recommending approval because I don't feel like I've done enough work on it. It's fair. Okay. And, and, and like I said, if it's if there's a number in that first column, that means it did go through the the budget process and the capital project. So okay. um, I think the only thing I'd, I'd ask is, as you had just had that conversation about condensing the list. I think basically, I mean, I, I think this list as it exists in this format would be helpful for all the other town council members to see the, the total detail. If you want to put a synopsis sheet on the front of it, that's fine. Yeah. That's we'll do. Fine. This will be back up. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate there's comfort in seeing these, being able to flip through the CIPs and, and actually see them yeah. and map yeah. them up. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. And will you be able to have the term on March 4th? or? Uh, we can work on that. That's usually something that gets done as the Comes later. goes. There's a lot of tweaking. Okay. Improving. Just was wondering. But by and large, we can be really assured that nothing will be ever bonded past its useful life. Correct. So that's that's policy that is a, adhered to. So anything that has a clear life, like a, a, a lawnmower, you know, you, that's not going to be a 20-year piece of equipment. So we're not going to bond that for 20 years. And the rating agencies actually like us to pay down our debt in a, a quicker term. So, you know, one of my recommendations is to anything less than 50000 we don't bond for more than five years. That means, you know, on the budget side, that means we're going to have some hefty duty payments if we do that So in the first five years. But lesser interest so. costs, too. So it does make sense to accelerate those. Mm -hmm. so, so the answer to... Because of Christine's question about is there a way to put a range of the, the, the I can the, do that, yeah. Yeah, just a range of what the numbers and, are. And, yeah, and just let my little draft go over it, too. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because once just, we sit down with the financial advisor, we'll, we'll do the final. We'll find it, just kind of give the folks in the audience, everybody else, just an idea of like, mm -hmm. you know, a range three to five years or something. Yep. Like that. And if it's easy, tagging which ones have already been spent, I think would be useful information as well. Okay, yeah, we do have that in the spreadsheet. We just had it hidden on this one. Yeah, okay. color code or something. Red for <laughs> something. Already spent expected expenditures, yeah. future expenditures. Yeah. Okay. You're ready. I can tell. You guys, are we good? Um, yeah, so, I mean, does it help to have an action for us to move it to the council? It's not essential. It's no. It's on the agenda. It's, it's on your agenda, okay. so you'll the full council will see it. Um, Perhaps you'll be able to speak to the to the item when it comes up because you've seen it. Your, your comfort and you've had a chance to check. We'll have had more time to digest. Sure. Yes. 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 And, yes. and if you have so, any specific questions, you know, you can feel free to call us or okay. text us. So, work. what was the date that we were we need to bond this? We have the first <coughs> reading um, next week. The second reading is the second. On the 18th. 18th, and then there's a 20 or 30 day waiting period for okay. folks to come back and say, hey. More questions, and then after that, we start the process. We'll put together a preliminary official statement, uh, go through that two or three times to update numbers, and then we meet with the bond rating agencies. I think Councillor Hayes has sent in on one of those in the past. It's interesting if you guys want to do it. It's a long yeah. process, then. and then 
once they give their rating, then they send it up. We send it up to bid and get the bids back, and then uh, the treasurer will, you know, sign off on what the the winning bidder. So that sounds like the summer time frame. End of April. End of April. Okay, it goes end of April. So, is so that you you must have the next one planned, the one that will be after this one. So then, is there after April? Is there another one nope. before the? We can only well we can bond as many times as we want, I guess. But uh, generally, we only do one bond issue a year. Just so one a year. One until okay. Next, this, this time next year. year. But the goal, my goal to do this, which is kind of fast tracking a little bit, was so we'd have some final numbers. So when we get to the budget, when mm. we add this debt in, we'll, we'll know what those numbers are. And it'll Great. Help us with the budget process. Okay. That's all good. Great. Do you want me to withdraw my motion since I so moved? Can. Yeah. I'll withdraw my motion. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next item, um, you know, I think this is because. Um, wanted to talk about the school impact fees as we are having in, fit in front of us a request from the Board of Education, I believe, or we will have a request that we consider we using the impact fees to fund, <coughs> I'm assuming just the, the current, we funded through impact fees, the eight corners modulars that are there right now. Mm -hmm. And that had about a 60 to $70,000 overrun. It's 51 they, now is what they Because they use some other for. funds. Right. So I think there, there are two things in here. And, it, and the first thing is Tom has produced a document that kind of lists the history of the impact fees and some other things. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if anybody had any questions on just that, because I've got some questions just on some of the transactions and other things. So I don't know if starting there. I think it's a good idea to start there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the, the question, uh, this is great that we have this accounting. What I, I think is missing is that all of these impact fees are supposed to be used for a specific purpose. Um, and those were identified in a submission to the um, Department of Education. This is actually as it reads in the ordinance back in, I think, 2001. Um, it'd be good to see well, what those projects are and then what's the balance remaining. Uh, because when that is all paid off, this impact fee is supposed to terminate or could be Refreshed. repositioned, refreshed, mm -hmm. um, to apply to something different. I think initially this was supposed to go for the high school edition and some well, other it's a whole host there of things. Some specific items in here, but I could be wrong. Well, the wording of the ordinance talks about a submission to the Department of Education dated July 2601, and it goes on to describe for Scarborough Middle School, Scarborough High School, the Wentworth Intermediate School, and the primary schools. So it's a, a, I don't have that 2001 submission to DOE, but it apparently was quite broad, right. uh, system-wide. Yeah. And historically what we've done until very recently, used these funds to offset school debt. And I feel fairly comfortable in saying that that is, those have all been qualified uses of these funds, given some of the debt that we, we still have in the books for one or more of those listed projects. Yeah, if I had to guess, I, I would agree with you. I think that's probably the case, but mm -hmm. I feel like if we're gonna be accounting for it, we should actually show what the balance is and how much of this payment is taking it down. So which of these projects are we funding? With the, because it, the only ones that we can still use these fees for are, one, are ones that have debt outstanding, because the other ones were supposed to be completed by 2012. Like, believe is the way that it read. Well, we certainly have significant debt still in the books for the high school project and Wentworth Intermediate. And that would also inform when we need to refresh the ordinance. Yeah, this is an, well, certainly yeah. an antiquated <coughs> reference, and we know there was a more recent submission to DOE as recent as 2017, perhaps 18. And it doesn't have to be tied to a DOE submission. That's just what we did sure. or whoever wrote this ordinance 20 years ago right. did. I think there are a number of impact fee ordinances that have these kind of sunset dates that are long past and we're still uh, utilizing them for the purposes of the original ordinance. So I think they just need to be, you know. We recommend that all the impact fee ordinances are looked at as part of the growth management discussion. In my mind, they are a direct, um, directly related to growth, uh, growth management. And so I, I think this is territory we need to cover 
for any number of reasons, not the least of which to make sure that we still have legitimate legal basis for charging these fees and we're using it for the intended purpose. But that kind of segues into my next concern with this, yep. is the portables at eight corners, I'm quite certain, even though I haven't read what was submitted in 2001, that those were not contemplated or on the original plan because it was pretty specific to relate to capital or actually major capital improvements and um, trailers aren't capital improvements, they're personal property. So <clears throat> that's where I have a tough time trying to use these funds for that purpose. For that purpose. Yeah. Um, because you know, this ordinance is derived from state law and the state law is pretty clear is that you can only use impact fees for the reason that they're collected or the purpose that they're collected. Um, and when you're done that project or paying off that debt, you're supposed to, if you have funds left over, return them to the property owners, at least the way that our ordinance reads. Um, so I guess that's, I, I, this isn't the first time I've said this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it got approved last year, but I feel like this coming before us in the, f without more detail, at least some supporting evidence from that submission from 2001, I feel like I'm being asked to violate both our local ordinance and state law to approve a $50,000 overage on a, you know, that's tied to a $50 million school budget. It, it's frustrating to me. So, so all of what you say, I, I believe, is accurate and correct. Um, for me, I, I, I try to appreciate, you know, certainly if we're using these fees for uh, a fire truck, I think we would be very blatantly and clearly violating. It seems to me these impact fees are intended to have growth and development pay its fair share of impacts. And so um, I think there's this use of funds is, in my mind, in keeping with the spirit and the concept um, at the heart of this. Whether there's a technical and or legal issue is certainly something we shouldn't dismiss. No, I've, I've asked about this. I mean, have you um, requested legal counsel? I have, and I just simply did not hear back from him as okay. of, you know, had the business today. But uh, so I, I think that I would, well. if it's going to be on the next agenda for the council, I think it would be good to at least have his interpretation. I expect um, I'll have that. Excellent. Excellent. So I just had two quick questions. And what I didn't follow, just, I just had a question on footnote three. Mm -hmm. Which is a transfer to the general fund. It was five hundred and nine point six. Mm -hmm. What? Well, what was? I mean, I I know that we approve. I'm assuming the modulars are in that number. No. no. So Excellent. what was? What was? What was the five hundred nine? The five hundred nine was um, the just so the debt offset was has historically been based on the impact fees collected two years prior to the budget cycle that we're, we're budgeting for. And so if you look, two years prior would have been a $709,590 was collected in school impact fees. And the idea was that that was really a blip on the on the kind of- It was tempting, I must admit. It was tempting. It was tempting. <laughs> but it was, it was such an outlier that the idea was to reduce that down to 509 to kind of bring it more in line with what has traditionally been used to offset debt. Um, and then, but you'll see also in that footnote, the school put into their budget as using impact fees $118,340, uh, $320 for f um, furnishing the modulars. Yeah, that was another funny little deal we did. At the right, mm -hmm. but that was done j just so for the timeline. So in April of 2019, the, the BOE came to the council and said, hey, we would like to use impact fees $260,000 to get purchased these classrooms that we need to install this summer in order to have open September 1 for our students to come and if we wait until budget cycle we will have missed the boat on that and we won't have the space that we need and the town council agreed and that's where you see that um, April 19 $260,000 dollar line wow. okay yeah. so that's the classrooms but then within the budget cycle they put in using impact fees outfitting those classrooms that's that 118 320 that was then <clears throat> added to the five um, 509. Was it multifamily driving the spike in 17 and 18? <clears throat> Most directly. Yes. Okay, so I think, um, you know, I think the request to have, when it does come in front of the council, to have legal advice about whether that's an appropriate use or not. Um, yeah. 
I don't know what we do with what's already been. Well, that would be good to know too. Oh, well, well, yeah, but I mean, if, if, it, if it. Either way, yeah. yeah it, I mean, if the answer is no, that's not an appropriate use, that, that begs the question about what right. do we do? Pay so. it back or. Yeah. Or something. There's probably yeah. options. I, I, that's I would right. Like to that's know exactly that. right. Yeah. So, so I think legal counsel would be. I'll do my best to have that in your hands. Uh, the request has been made, and yeah. so at this point, I just met with the uh, council leadership. Uh, this item is on your March March four agenda. So, so I think if if the legal opinion were to come back negative, um, then I think we need to have a strategy for the for that discussion that night about what we're going to do. <clears throat> well, I would. Respectfully suggest you deal with the request that's in front of you, the 51. I, I don't know if we're in a position to make a decision about prior decisions you've made. Um, I think there's some you may want to consult with. That might start the process. With, uh, yeah. If it's, if it, right. I, if it's not okay for the 51. I think it's important to note that we also have not been asked to return monies here. And no, you know, no, no one has paid fees in has expressed an interest or a concern with the use of funds. I think Councillor Clucci's point is... A good one, nonetheless. And, and um, just as a point, in total so far, we've collected about five million six hundred and seventy thousand in impact fees, and I forget how much went where it was, but it far exceeded that number. So, you know, I think between that middle school, the high school additions, there's probably a couple of them in there. Um, but I, I think so still too. Get you the information. And I just uh, like I think it's going to be relatively easy to make the case that using it for debt service for the high school, maybe even Wentworth, although maybe not for that one, but uh, probably certainly the high school, uh, it's going to be a perfectly acceptable use of these funds. Uh, I just, I think it would be beneficial to us to show what the balance is on the debt for the high school and, uh, and how much we've paid so that we can make sure mm. we can account for it. One of the challenges we have is I don't have a copy of that 2001 submission to DOE, so I, I can't answer your question, what were the particular projects and costs associated with those. I presume the school nobody? department can produce that. Okay. Wow. I feel like that's basic accounting. It, if, if we have an impact <coughs> that is specific for a purpose, we should know what that purpose is and, and account for it. Yeah, we can, we can figure out what the debt payments were. We have the debt payments, so we'll know what those are and okay. compare them to what's been actually collected going there. Okay. And I'll try and get that, too, for the, for the next meeting also. That's Excellent. And I guess the only other question I had is on page four of, of this, those are the current fees? I mean, they were set in 2002? Yes, they, they do. Um, uh, they're adjusted annually for inflation. They are. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but the, the fees you're seeing on the back page reflect the current fee that has been adjusted for inflation. The very last page, this one, right? Um, it's a standalone page table. Four. Tody's actually gone so far as to insert those updated figures in the ordinance that they have in front of them. Oh, I didn't think she's, I thought she told me. She yeah, because it was 3200 or something. Oh, that's a new. It's now uh, 4560. For single family dwelling? Is that the number you're looking at? Yeah, 4,630 4, right now as of February 1st. We're required through this ordinance to have it out by February 1st of each year. So. It wasn't in our original package. It was in the one that. Yeah, the other fee on the. So maybe I have an ordinance. Yeah. What she gave. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's just an automatic adjustment it, uh, tied to. Inflation or something like that, right? Yeah, it shows it in here. Gina sends out an email sometime in mid January of every year, it seems to me, saying the new fee is less and such based on inflationary. Section 8A talks about the inflation fee. Yeah, I guess the only thing I'm concerned about is those, you know, whether those still are relevant to the marketplace. My guess is that, you know, we've, we've talked about looking at impact fees. I think in particular for this, if this is one, especially with all the growth going on, that there's, you know, I, I think in some of the work we had done for Scarborough Downs, some, some towns are, you know, there are multiples of that that they're charging for impact fees for school. At least that was one of the ones. So I don't know, what, what, is, what, is the, what is the process for looking specifically at the impact fees for school? Is that? 
you're suggesting is going to be part of a whole growth ordinance? In my maybe? mind, that's one of the ways to, it's part of the, the growth discussion. If there's development happening and that we allow and that will happen organically and we want to capture, make certain that they are paying their increment, if you will, right. their fair share, right. this is the method to do it and the only method to do it. Um, so I, I think we need to look back through all of our impact fees to make sure they are actually reflective of true costs going forward. Now, I think we'll have to talk to ordinance because I'm not sure that they're under that impression right now. But I agree. Uh, I, I, I think it, they're related. For instance, just uh, the corollary would be uh, traffic impact fees. We have four or five different ones. And the reason okay. they're different is they're actually based on, um, in some cases, designs, in other cases, actual costs of intersection improvements. And it calculates a per trip. Um, fee associated with either those estimates or those actual costs and applies those to development pressures on those intersections. So um, at the very least we need to look back at each of those to still see see if they still make sense and they're reflective of actual cost. Yeah, I guess my only point is as you know as we're talking specifically about the impact fees for schools and we know the impact that some of the growth is having whether this would be a, a higher priority for me to make sure these, as you have suggested, mm -hmm. really reflect what those true incremental costs are that's, that, that, that we're bumping into. I, I suspect so, they're but, rooted in that DOE submission of 01 and an estimate of improvements at all of system-wide. Yeah, that's where that this That had to have been up. the basis for the initial $3,200 um, right, for single family. Right, that would escalate it forward, but I think sure. we're done. I think what I'm saying, but that was based on what we knew in 2001. Yeah, your point's well taken. So 2020 it, is a whole different universe. Yeah, it's it's a, right. State law is actually kind of broad. I, I would recommend reading it. It's only like four sentences, the important pieces anyways. And um, you, you're not tied to tying it to a, a specific pro, pro, project that was submitted to the DOE. Um, you can tie it to a development. If you know a development's going to have an X impact on schools, as long as you can show that, then you can actually require the development to fund that estimated project. Impact. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's definitely yeah. worth looking at. Yeah. But, but it's not as simple as applying our per pupil cost. We, you know, let's say it's our pupil expense is fifteen thousand a year. Um, I don't think it's sufficient to, to simply pass that on as the impact fee. There's an incremental impact. And so it, it, this is not a simple undertaking. And I, I don't mean to complicate the growth management discussion. That's an important one. But to me, this is a related discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm just worried about timetable. That if I've got a lot of development going on, if it's going to be, I've heard some estimates that the growth ordinance will be addressed for nine to 12 months as it works its way through the process. Mm. Whether this is an important enough calculation that it should be escalated. So I, I think that's a question for ordinance, and we can we can pass that on. Probably so. concurrently looking at it makes sense rather than waiting till the end of the growth management and then taking this on. You're probably <coughs> two years out, Peter. Good. Good right. Point. Well, we know you know we do have a, an awful lot of growth happening right now, so uh, we may not have nine to twelve months. And in terms of the impact fees, um, yeah, I mean it, it's kind of interesting when the growth ordinance we say if you have a two-bedroom that's two-thirds but if you build a multiplex that's 1,130 per unit so I, I wonder how we'd want to balance off how we're counting the units under the yeah. reserve pool versus yeah. how we're actually doing the impact fee um, and I just wanted to say that I, I really appreciate um, Councilor Clucci looking into all this and looking at the detail because that that is very important to me personally you know to to get this right and make sure we're doing it right, um, but I do, I do feel the uh, the request by the schools for you know that particular project was a good use of these impact fees because a lot of the growth has been at that eight corner school. So I mean I think you know they had to have them. I, I agree with um, you know Mr. Hall that you know it does meet the spirit. You know, um, but I, I really appreciate Mr. Kluge saying, "Well, it may meet the spirit, but you know, we need to make sure that it's actually meeting the, the, the letter of what's, what's allowed." So, I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. 
I do want to just make the point. Um, we are in, in rare company, in fact. I'm not aware of any other community in Greater Portland, anyway, that's charging a school impact fee. There are other communities that charge other impact fees, and we can learn from that, frankly. We had an intern that did some analysis, and, and that's part of the materials that uh, will be reviewed, I hope, as part of the growth management discussion. But we are unique in charging school impact fees. So um, feel good about that. Uh, well, a, a little background. I mean, enrollment statewide is down 10%, and it's probably more than that in Portland. And that's what, about what we've seen in Scarborough in the mm -hmm. past decade. So um, it makes it difficult to make the case that development is impacting Enrollment. That, it that, does, but I do appreciate what the schools are saying, where they're talking about how the space is not what it was for the uses. You know, I mean, the, you know, the needs that they have have changed over the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I don't think they just go around using space that they don't, you know, that they don't have to. So I, I, I don't think the enrollment tells the whole story for the space they need. One of the things I'll see clarity from the town attorney on is that the capital aspect is an important one for the impact fees. Think of it as bricks and mortar as opposed to a IRS or even local de uh, definition of a capital project. The real point there is that these funds are not to be used to supplant operational expense. Right. They are used to help uh, expand and provide facilities, a seat for the child to sit in, so to speak, as opposed to the instructional component that comes with it. That's the distinction. It, and it's mm. it's complicated because for brick and mortar, you get a building permit, you have an engineer and architect sign off on it, you do a foundation and you build it. That's not what this is. This is they're, they're trailers, so it's not brick and mortar. But maybe you can make a stretch and say that it is. That I, I, I would just like to understand what that stretch is or how, how we make the connection, that's all. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> The next item on the agenda was to talk a little bit about the budget review process and there's a couple things to talk about. What was attached is sort of the schedule of dates um, and sort of what we have done in the past as a finance committee and that's why you on this schedule you've, you've got dates of you know when town council and school board are going to present the town council first reading, town council school board workshop. So you've got some dates, but you'll notice on this schedule of April 15th, 22nd, and 29th, which are kind of marathon sessions, as you can see, we've kind of left those open because what we did in the past, what we would do is we would schedule every single municipal department to come in front of us and walk through their budget presentation, and we would do that. We changed that a little bit last year where some are pretty clear cut and pretty straightforward. So we have kind of reserved blocks of time so when we do get the budget books if we do see some departments that have some you know unusual requests or reasons and so we're kind of leaving it open for us to and I think Tom we, oh, we did also invite invite the invitation some departments I think you've said like the, they opportunity. Like the opportunity they don't have a chance to meet with you and interact much at all mm -hmm. um, that's not true of all of them and take no offense to that um, but I think that's a really smart way for you all to have a little time with the budget book and prioritize and use your time to the greatest ability to satisfy your concerns. And, yeah. and, uh, and we're fine kind of waiting and, and reacting to your demands or your needs, I should say. So I think with that, the thought would be once we all see the budget books and as you guys go through it, you know, make a list of the departments you'd like to have come in front of us and then Tom maybe if you can check with those department heads that do like the opportunity. Um, Chances are you're going to want to meet with them anyway so we'll, we'll yeah, satisfy sure. both. So that's sort of the schedule. I don't know it's it's not a precise science but it it's kind of worked in the past and in mm -hmm. the, and the structure of those is that we will they usually will each department head will do take some of the time to do a presentation and kind of walk us through the things they'd like us to know or considerations um, and then we'll ask questions and and if you know um, the way that Tom puts together the municipal budget anyway will be he tries to deliver something that meets our goal out of the gate and then a lot of the time there'll be supplemental materials Tom will or the department heads will say you know we've met the budget criteria but but here are things that 
we're not going to be able to do or things that we're asking for for your consideration. So it kind of gives you here's here's how we get to sort of our target. Mm -hmm. But here are some things that a town may need that we may want to consider. And that's that again has been a yeah, process and, that and we've been, that's been a very successful approach. Uh, I've been impressed year over year. Council has very often, maybe every year, actually added money in once they heard the persuasive argument or rationale as to why we'd like something in. And uh, so we're very pleased to present it in that fashion. And sort of our our process a little bit different. We start with this is what this is what will deliver the budget numbers and maybe things we can't do whatever and we can add them in. Sometimes the other process has been we start with everything in and then you do a treasure hunt trying to find the things you can take out of the well, mix. And that's a little more difficult. So this is a this has worked for us, at least in the municipal mm -hmm. side, I think, Tom, and yeah. get your perspective. No, uh, totally true. And, and I intend to deliver budget much in the same fashion. Uh, the challenge is the school ch tends to take a different tact, and that's their prerogative. Um, they, they really make you aware of all their needs up front, and so it, it is a, a bit of a different process to kind of work through that. Okay. And this will be new and different. We've got a new superintendent, so uh, Sandy and I have not worked together through a budget cycle, so that, that should be interesting as well. And we do have some tentative agreements on what we hope to see at the first read. Yeah. yeah. Potentially there'll be some answers to some big, uh, big items on the school side. So I think we saw an email today about some workshops. Um, and so I just, that sounded awfully close to this date of April 1st. So if they're, I don't, I'm afraid I don't know their process very well. When they workshop, are they almost done? Or how are we going to do this joint presentation like four days after their workshop? Well, I mean, there's there's two issues that we do need to talk about tonight. One is they did announce when those workshops are going to be. And those workshops, I think Tom and I had this conversation, mm -hmm. Colette and I had this conversation. In the past, what those have been is the executive leadership of the school prepares sort of, everybody submits their budget, they look at it. What they do is they give an opportunity, just as I had described, all the department heads or principals of the school come forward and talk about their budget request. In mm -hmm. the past, they have always invited the town council members to come and be part of that process. In the past, they've been almost all day. Yeah, they've been marathon right? they weekends like uh, in the past, but they seem to be switching it up, doing it over two different days to make it a little more manageable. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do it on the 24th and 25th, and that's where as they have put their budget together, then their department heads and their departments will come forward and, and be in the Board of Education members then ask them questions about what's in their budget, why is it in there, that type of thing. There's Unfortunately for us, there's a conflict because on the 25th is when we have our next finance committee meeting. And so they are asking for, they want us to come. So the first question to both of you is seeing that you haven't been through that process before we, do you want to go to that process so you get a sense of what's in being asked in the Board of Education budget rather than be here? They're conflicting times. Are these the leadership committee meetings? Yes. Where they have like 50 people? Yes. Okay. So I have, I, I've watched those. They're, they're, and they usually record them as well. Yes. I, I think. Or last year they did. Yeah, they do. I think this year the challenge, part of the request and part of putting on the table is that meeting space is tight that day. And the only place they have other than chambers here oh. is they yes. <laughs> well, they, I mean, it, you know, they're they're being, they're asking you if, especially if both of you wanted to attend or if we wanted to attend, yeah. then. But yes, they would like to be able to do it here so they can televise it. And I think I, the only I other problem mm. on this schedule, do you have this this one here yep. uh, in front of you as well? You'll notice those two dates are in blue here, March twenty four and five, and I can get some further detail, but uh, it looks like they're splitting it up. So uh, like a morning session on the 24th, starting at 8.30 in the morning, and then an, an early evening session uh, the following day, starting at 4. Yeah. Now, I'm guessing they probably run three to four hours. Yeah. Long. I would be okay with it, but I would want to add in a March meeting prior because yeah, we have so many us. things. Yeah. Well, that, that was the second question. So the second question to both of you is, Colette, you You've scoured the, and it's only two dates that would work. That's their no. dates. Well, no, no. The 23rd and 24th, excuse me. Yeah, Monday, Monday or Tuesday. Those are the only two times it's 
So the 24th before 4? No. When, uh, well, the 24th towards the end of the day. Okay. Because yeah, I mean, in the we, we usually meet at 5.30, so okay. with the, the 20, and I don't know how that conflicts with maybe some of your other commitments for other committees that you may be on. I will tell Jimmy you Cole from staff's, that. <laughs> staff's perspective, that's finals week. Uh, we, uh, that's finals week, uh, effectively. We're, we're trying to get the budget out the door. So uh, that okay. is an extremely busy week for us, if that matters to you. <laughs> I'm reducing the budget before you know. Yeah, and did you check the week before? Yeah, that, that. Yeah. So we'll do our best to accommodate your needs, but uh, that, that is a busy week for us. So your preference? would be not to have a finance committee meeting that week. It would, uh, unless okay. there's some burning matters that you know require your attention. Immediately thereafter, you're going to be diving into... We'll, we'll be busy the following month, so I, I, I'm i fine with that. And if something comes up that's burning, we can try to schedule. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I could think of that we had sort of put out there was, you know, you know, we had started work on the, on the TIF policy, yeah. and we had sort of said, I think other town council members are anxious for it to reappear. Um, so we had kind of talked about them, but that also is, um, I don't know if there's, did you check the week, you checked the week after too. Well, what about the 12th? I didn't check the week after because that's when the budget was. Yeah. I mean, March 12th, there's, us, there's nothing listed on the time. Where it doesn't have to be here or televised if it's specific for the TIF policy? Um, or, and the software that we haven't yeah. had a chance to schedule that. Um. You can. I, the other thing that's on our minds is this five-year operation yeah, and no. capital. That's yeah, so, so the model. Yeah, I mean, right. We've got, we've got some heavy lifting yeah. on, on our agenda. There's nothing um, listed on the town calendar on March 12th, but it doesn't always show. On right, it doesn't always show, so, but at least there's nothing listed on that day. So, so it sounds like the consensus of both of you is you'd probably opt to go to the workshop that the Board of Education is having on the 25th? I think at this point it's more important to have that meeting here televised, yeah. and yeah, I would probably go. Okay. Um, so why not, I'll work with Colette and see if there's, uh, it sounds like that week's not a good week for... Edward, what you would like to have it on the 23rd and 24th, we obviously can't. Well, yeah, I, I hear you though. But there's lots of work going on. Yeah, yeah, well... I guess we'll, the, so. the compromise, if, if you know, consider one, would be to have a not a, uh, a laundry list of items that we use that time kind of very strategically for a couple of things that, that do need to get advanced, whether it's the tip policy to move that forward and or start talking about what this five-year model looks like. Yeah. Uh, I think those would be two for two, two, two items that would be that are timely. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I mean, uh, or to John's point, maybe a workshop that doesn't have to be televised. I don't know what the rules are on that. But. As long as you don't take any motion. It can be on the 23rd or 4th. You have this space. Our, uh, 23rd? 23rd. We will just look haggard and bleary-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we tentatively, if you guys are okay, tentatively do the 23rd. But, but then we will look. We will, Colette, I'll work with you to see if there's some time that gets you guys beyond the stress point of that's the worst week right for you guys yeah <laughs> they're all sad for well, yeah, bad after, after that Friday. but so after yeah, Friday, yeah, well, the departments have all given us all the materials for the budget all the things that they're doing with each department then Chris and myself and Ruth and Gina will then start our part to develop Not a, a fun time. Not, not a fun time. Okay. Not stop fun. Fun. A lot of work. Yeah, and the, um, you know, the webinar or whatever with the, with the software package is just a view. I mean, it's not, it's not, we don't have to discuss okay. it. It's just something. Is know, it a webinar or something you can share a link or was it a live? Um, no, they would, they would join, but um, they have plenty of webinars that you can go online yourself and look at. Yeah, that's um, good. That, that would yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you you know, even if we went to throw that in on the twelfth or something. Yeah. So I don't know. Open gov. I just want to meet more. <laughs> yeah. Is it open gov? It is one yeah, it's open gov. Yep. Have and of course I don't know when they're available. Does, or is that not an option? I think so, we 
The Socrata. I'm sorry, what was the question? Any of these have a fairly hefty financial component. I That's one of the reasons I, I kind of want to look at it. If it did turn out to be something that we thought we were interested in for this five-year model, um, the modeling, then it, it might behoove us to look at it and say, you know, hey, this is nothing that we have any interest in, or hey, you know what, this may be a direction, whether it's this software package or something else that we might want to go, and then realize it has public uh, budget implications. So if there's no commitment or whatsoever. You guys looked mm -hmm. last year, we, you know, um, none of us have had a demo. And, you know, John has a, a little bit different opinion on it. Um, but I think it's worth looking at. Well, I, so. I don't know what my opinion, I haven't yeah. looked at either. Yeah, so well, no, not on OpenGov, but on, <laughs> You know, rightly, us all being techies, you know, talking about, uh, you know, we, we'd be looking before we had a spec, you know, so, I mean, which is sure. sometimes so not, what, what, a not the way you do software. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, to, it's a learning. It's a learning. We need to involve our IT department in. Yeah. It makes sense to have them involved from day one to make sure that the systems we're considering are compatible with other existing systems. I, I think we could wait. I mean, if we looked at it and said, nah, I mean, we would probably just oh, not need to like use it. their time. You're going to see it and just say, yeah, give me that. Give me. <laughs> yeah. It's whether or not it no, that, can afford it. I, I agree with that, but there, there might be time after that. I'm just trying to kind of make it happen as opposed to, you know, if we get too, too, too involved and we get too far in a budget season, I'm just afraid it's, it's not going to happen. So, Do we have availability for all of you during daytime hours? Because that opens up for something like a, a webinar live with OpenGov. If you were all available at 2 o'clock, that would be a much more convenient time as far as space and, and that would maybe be easier if that was ever an option. I, I'm generally pretty flexible. So. <clears throat> Ditto. <laughs> he's yeah. he's going to work. <laughs> I'm and I do work, but I'm flexible, yeah. I mean, for me, it, yeah, and I, I can too. I, I, I can work from home and other stuff, so I can work as long as I don't have meetings. So <clears throat> let us, we'll take it offline and we'll figure out. I am sensitive to you guys. That's a lot on your plate. The, the next item, though, was the TIFF timetable, but I think there's some work and connect points and so. I think, so, Councillor Bastian and I met um, on Monday, and I've got most of what we discussed drafted up, um, so that can be reviewed by her to make sure it's meeting what she was was wanting to kind yeah. of present. I saw one comment from Councillor Lucci on the the doc that was shared out, um, asking for the specific language in the state statute that um, speaks to the. There's a couple. Of, so I keep making comments, and then they're gone. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm working off a different version, but. Mm. Uh, that's so one point. of them, yes, related to the residential. Right. So I was generally confused. So it, didn't, it took me like three, four times of reading it before I realized that this was just specific to TIFs that had an associated CEA, um, so economic development TIF. So that, that threw me for a little bit. Reading it after, I still didn't see where it, it required. Because if, uh, I guess it depends what you call it residential, right? But if it's a multifamily, um, I believe that you can use an economic development TIF to, to do that. Um, so that, it wasn't really clear, I, I guess, to me for that one. I think it said if it was solely residential. If it's single family homes, then I think, yes. No, I think the policy said solely residential. It didn't, it did not preclude mixed use. Okay. Yeah. I don't, based on my reading, it didn't exclude mixed but use. But I think that you, I, I would agree with Councilor Clucci that, um, a purely residential in the form of multifamily would, by the policy, be allowed to apply for a credit enhancement agreement. Yeah, or by state statute. Right. Um, so Betsy gave me an update after you guys met, and I was encouraged with what I heard. Um, so maybe after you're comfortable, uh, pass me a copy, and then I can try to work with you. I, I don't want to, unless you want us to work together. But. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to give it give an update. Um, so, um, Council Clucci and I have kind of talked about this a lot because we were more of the late people coming in on it. And um, the, uh, the, uh, everyone coming in late apparently misread the title because <laughs> so, we both had, had that challenge um, because I kept cha being challenged with it because I was like, there's not a TIF, uh, there's, there's nothing about TIFs here in terms of what our goals and our principles are for setting up a TIF as a town. Why would, why would we want to do that? It's not in there. And so um, 
taking a step back from that and saying it's just uh, related to a CEA and it's a, a process document in large for that, um, what I brought forward last time and what we discussed was um, looking kind of at the appendixes and section three and section four and making sure that we uh, articulate um, some of our values that we would want to uh, have people meet in order to grant them a CEA and then make sure that our forms were things that they had to fill out to tell us why they did meet that. And then that goes to my scoring section, which is based on, helps us get a little more towards our values. So if tax, you know, if t tax revenue is a high value for us, it might be worth, you know, the full 20 points. Um, if energy efficiency is a value to us and we have it on the list, but it's not as high as that, it might be worth 10 points or something. And then once we have a point system in place, um, then we would, as a council, as a committee and a council, set a threshold. If you don't meet, you know, this number of points, we're not even going to uh, do it. So the values, I think, once we get to that, will allow us to tweak what we really think about the values. Why would we ever really give a CEA? Why we would do a TIF, I think we're not addressing in this policy. So um, I think that still remains like an outstanding policy. and. I think we also mentioned that um, Portland did economic development and affordable housing TIF in the same document, mm -hmm. but we don't really have an affordable housing TIF, so it might be. Um, we do. Yeah, we do. Oh, we have an affordable housing TIF, but it might be that we look at that and kind of combine some other factors into that. Yeah, sorry, I misspoke on that. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we make that one for economic development and TIF, and why we would just do why we would ever consider just setting up a TIF. Um, as a town, as without someone coming to us for a credit enhancement. So, you know, we just didn't want to take all the work that had been done and say, okay, how are we not going to get forward on this? But I think we can collapse some of the, the things in, and then I think the sensitive work, I want sensitive, it's not the right word, but is the process. That's, I think people are very interested in the process to make sure that we get this out. It's really interesting, and I get like uh, Portland's got a big one on the table right now and their economic development um, team decided to release it right away, the request, because they said, we think it's good for it to go public. So it's the request, they haven't even started negotiation, nothing, they just said, here's the ask, it's out in public. So it's, it's, it's kind of more in line of what we're looking to do, like someone's asked, here's, here's what they're asking, and then the negotiations you know, kind of go from there, and I think there was an attempt in that steps to kind of do that, so I found that just side note, interesting that Portland just recently did that through their through their committee. And part of that, and I know what I've read in the paper, probably the same article, is that there's a, it's a really unique ask. There's a, there's a unique component <laughs> of a business improvement district, which is a, a different but related conversation. So I, I think that's one of the reasons they put it out there to say, this is more than just your normal uh, run of the mill. I can just say tip. I'm glad we've never done a deal that complicated so far. <laughs> that that is a, a complicated point. deal. I read that ar article. <clears throat> so to your point, I, there, there should be a strategy around TIF utilization because there's a benefit to the town, uh, or potential benefit to the town by, by maximizing our revenue sharing, our funding for schools, and our county, or minimizing our county taxes. Same thing with the business improvement district, although that one, it's a little different, but it, that's, I, I know that that's on me to help work it in, but I feel like that's what's missing right now from the document is, um, it's a little singularly focused on TIFs with CEAs, where I think we could benefit by having a, a generalized TIF strategy, and then one that just focuses on CEAs, because I think those are two very different things. So could we go forward with the TIF, with, even though it feels a little backwards, and then do just the TIF one after? Would you be comfortable with that? Maybe, if we can get them all in one. Well, I mean, like we get this one done and then go back to just the TIF one? Uh, maybe, I, I, I don't know. But it sounds like you've connected with Marissa and you feel comfortable, you've yeah, conceptually. I've, I've gotten most of what we discussed <laughs> yeah. um, drafted up. The only thing I have left to do is to create um, an appendix uh, an, in the um, that would be the actual scoring sheet for council to use as, as an example and 
and then have a companion to that that has the space for the, the requester to provide narrative to help guide that conversation. So, you know, another hour maximum of work. Um, and I can, I think, probably get that done by Friday. I'm happy to then share it over to you, John, Great. for you to then use that as the draft you're working off of to, to comment. And maybe I'll read it and then we'll sit down. That sounds great. Talk. So, so the, will there be points associated with this <coughs> value, if you mm -hmm. will, and, and a threshold established that's worth that's to be the done? Idea. Right. So there's, right now I have, as drafted, 11 criteria that the, the ask would be rated against. And so if we imagined a world in which there was a 100-point scale, uh, to Councillor Gleistein's point, that opens up an opportunity for a values discussion. So which of these criteria do you as a council more heavily value? They're, they're then weighted accordingly. Um, and then when an application comes in, that application is assessed on each of those criteria and given a, a, mm -hmm. a number between 0 and 5 or 0 and 20, depending on the weight of that criteria. Um, and the total is added up. And let's say that the council says, well, only applications that have scored 60 or better are moving forward. You now have a, up, you have a very subjective, subjective process made slightly more objective by right. having set these weights. Right. And just to be clear, we didn't go, Larissa and I didn't go into the actual values. I didn't say, well, here's what I think they should be. We talked about what was already in the document and then a couple of examples. So I would fully expect those values, after she gets done with them, would get tweaked, where people would say, you know what, I think we're missing this one. Uh, you know, and then I would say, you know, um, I mean, one of the best, I mean, we kicked around the idea of, you know, kind of starting over, but that, you know, that, that didn't seem like the best idea. But, um, you know, we really, I think we want to get into a, a point where we're, we've got a really good process for reviewing these and talking about these TIFs annually. And so the point scale, you know, in my mind would be something, if it's, if it works well, that, you know, the current council could weigh in on, okay, this year's point scale is 40 points and you, you're in, you're going to talk to us, you know, um, so, or, or it's, hey, you know what, we're, we're done with them. There's no points that you can, do, you know, so, you know, that they would be able to, each council would be able to look at it and um, assess what that, that threshold might be on an annual basis. Um, and, and staff, me, is not filling in suggested point values. That I think is absolutely outside of what I should be doing. So the, the document will read with the, the criteria that I, yeah. that was suggested by Councilor Gleistein and that I also pulled from the existing document to kind of combine. Um, but then where there's that column for the, the, the possible score to be reached right. for that, that's, that's a policy decision. So those are blank and that would be mm -hmm. at a committee yeah. level. I think it's an interesting con sorry. No, okay. uh, concept, and I don't know about having a, a point threshold to move on, but you could certainly use that to inform your decision. You could, right. but then you could also use it to incentivize development that you want, right? So if we're in a situation, mm -hmm. and that's a way to make that known or, or public, I guess that yeah, we want this type of industry to come to Scarborough, or and that could change with every council or every year. Mm -hmm. so, so conceptually, it sounds like you've got a framework that that's an hour away. Yep piled on everything else you're going to do, and then the conversation with, and I don't know what, what that is, but if, if we were targeting to get to Tom's point earlier about a very specific finance committee meeting sometime in March. I would say time. beware yeah. the eyes. Like, I think that we could, I think we could, we could be around that mid-March point, depending on yeah. Coach Lukicci's okay. schedule, um, which I think is pretty flexible still this time of year. Um, so if we were to look at that end of the second full week of March, yes. third okay. week of March, we Perfect. would be good to go. Perfect. Okay. And I do That's have a couple more that. insertions that I wanted to present out, so I wasn't sure the best way to do that, but maybe put them in and highlight them for people. We, we kind of went, when, I, when John and I showed up, we kind of went through what the other counselors had already said and the staff had said, you might want to talk about these points. I have a couple of more. Um, so, so I guess it, it maybe communicate those to Larissa okay. again if you've got a couple more, and then yeah, when it comes back to all of us, we can. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to highlight it so people can actually discuss it. So it's not like oh, this got slipped in and nobody and everybody okay. missed it. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, I, I think I think what you know. Again, these are sort of living, breathing documents. Mm -hmm. 
I think there's some anxiousness by the rest of the town council to get something in place. It's yeah, probably not going to be perfect. Right. It's the 80-20 rule. If we can get 80% of the way there, um, and then we can live with it for a while, and what works is great, and what doesn't work, other other finance committees can, can change. So I think. And they may have things they want changed once well, yeah. it gets out to committee. I mean, I mean to I council. Just put, put your thoughts in there, um, Betsy, and yeah. uh, we'll all read it with fresh eyes. Yeah. Uh, and okay. I, I mean, it's kind of complicated to track through the, the changes to this That's point true. in different comments. Okay. And uh, I don't know that it's really helpful to. No. So okay. All right. Is new and, Great. Yeah, and maybe Marissa can highlight what's new. And okay. we will, I will maybe. try yeah. to <laughs> convert it to worse. Struggling <laughs> with the document. Yeah. This has definitely been, this is a very highly evolving document. And yes. I, I think that there's um, some value in us saying, okay, this is where we are now. Highly involved suggests intelligence, though. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good point. Okay, so we, we got a game plan for that. Then the other thing I think we need to think about a process for is, and, and I'd like to, again, the team to kind of give us some guidance, but we are going to be facing how are we going to arrive at our assessed value that we're going to use to do tax calculations. Mm -hmm. And John, John did do a worksheet, um, and I'm not sure this is, you know, whether you want to, has everybody seen that? Do you guys have that? Mm -hmm. um, whether it's worthwhile walking through it tonight or to have a, a workshop on that specifically. Um, I guess I'd defer to, to this group. And, and Tom, I, you've probably given it some thought too as you're struggling yeah, with the budget. I, I, yeah, I think my approach would be somewhat different than Councilor Clucci's. I'm not saying it's right. I, I think we're on some uncharted territory. This is always a bit of an uncomfortable calculation for us to do. We yeah. feel as though it's worked with not all the information needed and treading in a territory that's not really ours, but nonetheless, we find ourselves yeah. needing to do it. So unlike Councilor Clucci, who appears to be looking at uh, gross and net expenditures, budgets, is that true? Correct. Well, it's trending them forward. So you're using yeah. a mill rate to trend your spending. Yeah, I was going to say, I would say closer to the policy, which uh, rather than looking at history of growth of, uh, in our tax base, valuation growth, I think we would look to be a little more specific and exact this year by working with the assessor's office and the planning department to do a better job of really understanding where that value is being created. Yeah, yeah that was, um, I mean, because we have a fresh rebound, so it, right. it, it's a good starting point. Right, and, and values as of April 1st. And so that although that work is ongoing, I think collectively with the team, we can look at kind of the big ones and, 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 and do a, a better job of really understanding how those big projects are going to affect value. Yeah. I, I think that's critical. And actually, that, uh, that is what I've been suggesting. Okay. Um, what, what I sense today is a little bit different. So we're, we're acutely focused on the property, property tax ask. And that's important to focus on. But you also need to focus on your overall or your growth to make sure that you have enough to keep the ship sailing. Uh, so that, I, that's why I, I, and typically when you trend those forward, you use your mill rate to help you trend because the mill rate compensates for the different factors that might change uh, in the numerator and denominator. So you've got your uh, spending on the top and you've got valuation on the bottom, right? And spending moves with inflation uh, and growth. And on the bottom, valuation moves with inflation and growth. And typically, those are offsetting. So if you look at your historical mill rate, it shouldn't go up 3% a year. It should be flat. The issue that we have with our mill rate is it doesn't move with inflation. It only moves with growth, sort of. So it's kind of a, a, a mixed bag of, of things. Um, so that's that. I was just trying to show that hmm. there's another way. Yeah, yeah. I am quite certain that it's too big to bite off this year, but you can use it to inform when you're looking at um, what's presented for the budget. Um, just another approach to to getting at the bottom line numbers, which is how much we're going to spend in total and how much we're going to ask of the tax taxpayers. Oh, yeah, that's the, yeah. So, Tom, your so your suggestion for this year would be to start with the reval number. That's fresh, right? I mean, started last year's assessment. That, I mean, that's you know, the base. That's that's, that's the starting the base, point. And, but and we know what came off and abatements and 
and that we know that you know with what that great accuracy. Is. You know what that number is. And then we need to, to work to understand what sort of new value is going to be coming online. Come online, you know, almost by right. project by project, go down through and, and make that estimate. Yeah. But still be working with a range. I think we'll have to. I think we'd come up with a number. I'll call that as kind of the, the estimate. And I might produce, a, similar to the policy, uh, a number above and below that uh, to produce that, that range. That range. That's how I've typically been reporting out uh, through the budget process. So can, you, can we think about, I, I don't know when you contemplate that component of your budget work's going to get done, but when it is done. Sometime between now and April 1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I realize that. Um, I, I would think it'd be of interest to the finance community just to look at that, what, how you've done it, what the calculations are, so we can maybe fold it into one of our scheduled meetings just to have that update at some point when it's ready. Does that make sense or not? Yeah, I'll or? do my best. I mean, there's just a lot to get done between now and I, 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 prime time with the budget. Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts, too. Like, uh, the state is changing the way the homeowner's exemption is is calculated this year, or they changed the amount, so it's up to 25,000. That right there is a pretty significant impact on our valuation. It's gonna reduce it because that's not taxable value. Um, now we're gonna be compensated on the other side for that, uh, but that, uh, well, and I think they may have changed the BEP exemptions as well. So there, there's a lot of moving parts mm -hmm. in there, uh, in addition to the abatements that, so we're probably going to be relatively flat to 40 million, up 40 million, something like that. And for all those reasons, you know, if we had our druthers, we wouldn't be talking tax rate. Uh, we should be talking about expenditures, the things that we can control. These well, are, and but, that's where I was going with what I sent around is that it's, you can use your history to try to, you know, trend or understand where you should be. And then you talk about what we're spending um, instead of uh, a really not a very good metric. It, it, there's a lot of things impacting that metric that aren't clean, or, or the noise should be removed if we're going to use it to, for something. So. But the, it does. And, and the impact of the reval just makes that analysis uh, even more complicated. Mm. So. <clears throat> so I don't know if I'll have time, Peter, to kind of socialize that process with you. I just know that that's part of what will be included in my budget estimate, and I suspect there'll be conversation, there'll be opportunity for conversation yeah. around what we did and how we did it. Yeah. Well, we'll start to see that with the yeah. budget book for Kevin. Yeah. And, and I think your conversation, I, I think we should tee up that conversation about going forward. What do we do? How do we do it? What do we look at? Yeah. yeah. Councilor Colucci, my sense is that you have some, have always had some reservations with kind of the simplicity of the current policy. Is that fair? Um, or do or you think there may be a better way of getting the same it, It's point? atypical from my experience uh, to so. use a 10-year average to project something like this forward. Typically, you need to adjust your data. You need to normalize your history so that you're looking at a clean ratio and use that to project forward. And that, so it's, um, there's simple ways to do that. Uh, but things like the reval and things like shifts in uh, homeowners exemption BETE uh, really affect the the, poli the method that's in our policy. That um, especially the revaluation that we had for commercial and residential, um, that it's not much better than just pegging a three percent number you know, or four percent growth um, and inflation. So maybe that's where this 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 discussion can really be had in earnest. You know, let's get through this reval year, which is kind of the corrective. It's going to be easier next year. And then yeah. really talk about maybe a better policy on a going forward basis yeah. that is better reflective and better predictor of, of, uh, of that metric. Yeah. You know, and we started some of this conversation, I mean, the, you know, with the joint finance committees, at least vectoring off of our traditional model to start looking at Sorry. expenditure and other things. So it's a evolution or. Yeah, I would say, you know, in spite of its simplicity and its crudeness, uh, it's been a fairly it accurate works. predictor. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll tell a story. That, I mean, when I worked in insurance, we acquired a lot of companies. And the reason we acquired those companies was because that's how they managed their business. If they look back <laughs> 10 years instead of looking ahead. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then somebody can get an advantage on you. Now, we're a municipality, so it's not a huge risk. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying you want to understand what's in front of you more so than, than where you've been. Um, and that's, the, that's kind of the philosophical difference. <clears throat> 
and I'm going to work on getting That was it. nicely put. Thank you for <laughs> but, you know, letting me down gently. South Portland could be looking to annex at any moment. <laughs> really? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Although, I, what I would agree, and I think especially where we are now, that looking ahead with, with the things that we know are in the pipeline, yeah. that is something we need to really yeah. think about is, is what is it going to look like the next 10 years, five years, as, as we are facing some of the, the factors we know. We do it a year at a time, and we need to start thinking, what's five years out, what does it look like, what's, so, the, or what's the impact? And that's the modeling. That's the modeling that we need to get to. So, it's a timely, yeah. timely information you're bringing forward. So I guess with that, um, anything else on these items? or? We talked about item number five, where future meeting dates, that is to be determined. We will we will relinquish the March 25th date um, to free up chambers. Um, and then we will circle back and try to have a simple finance committee meeting in the Ides of March, maybe. Um, and then also maybe in that same month, we can at least, we can start thinking about that, that financial modeling about what is it we want to say or just sort of a, a starting point in that. And I guess with that, um, then the other, would, is there anything, uh, some of these other things we do need to get to, I think you've asked about the reserve accounts, I'll also, we'll try to find if we can do a webinar or something for the software. <coughs> Take a one for you, just find out yep. when they might be available. And again, the question was, does that have to be a public meeting if we do that? Or could it be? Could we could have, sign into it if they wanted yeah, to. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering whether it can be. Well, you could assemble it. here, and we could have it in these chambers. Folks are welcome to sit and view it along with you. And then that could be up on a large screen, which would be a lot easier for you guys to be working with. When yeah. Karen and I did the demo last year, you know, we're kind of sitting together with a laptop in uh, front of us. It's yeah. not ideal with three people, certainly. Yeah. Was that with Open Go? Yes. And then after that, we have a really pretty full schedule, so we will circle back to some of these items. Mm -hmm. Um, item number six was public comment. <laughs> Jeff, you're the last, you're the last, last person standing. <coughs> I don't know if you have any. Not tonight. Not tonight. Okay. And so <coughs> I, guess, I guess with that, um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All, all those in favor. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. We'll try to we'll try to stay out of your lane in the next. <laughs> Enjoy the budget course. Is this Thank your you. favorite time of year? <laughs> Reserve comment. Staff does uh, the heavy lifting for me. I just have to make some tough decisions. They do all the work. I used to hate budget season. Oh. Ask my wife how I like, but how she okay. likes budget season. Sorry. Sorry.